Aloha! Sustainable Farmer Drew, Garden to Garden, Sacred Herbs and Botanicals, coming at you from Northern New York. Woo! It is cold. I wish I was in a tropical location or maybe even in Israel right now. But before I begin, I just want to say shalom and thank you to Rivka and Ancient Roots Israel for having me here and connecting with everybody. I hope you enjoy this video and that it will accompany this second video that I did approximately, I think, a couple years ago on the big island of Hawaii on the same plant that I'm going to show you today, which is mullein, Verbascum thaspis. So the one in the back you'll see in the second video, someone ripped off the top of this one here, not me. But today we're going to just go through a couple of things that I did not mention, which are on these um, first year smaller plants. So we're going to walk over here and look at one more carefully and talk about it. So mullein lives on, you know, one to three year cycles and very rarely longer. It has this really intriguing, soft, grayish green leaves, which grow in this basal pattern, basal rosette pattern. The leaves can grow in excess to 12 inches, and the plant produces an abundance of seeds. In fact, one plant can produce over 175,000 seeds in its lifetime. And I like to think of mullein as really an opportunist plant, and the seeds will stay dormant for hundreds of thousands of years. And when the time is right, they will, um, they will germinate. So they really only like to grow in disturbed soils. And that's really how mullein has survived through the ages, you know, over the 2000 years of its history. Um, during <clears throat> its second year, and you'll see this in the other video, uh, the stock the tall flowering stalk grows and has its distinctive five petaled yellow flowers. And the flowers, the root, and the leaves are all medicinal. So mullein was traditionally used as basically a cheap torch. And you dry the leaf and stem and that will readily ignite. One of the plant's nicknames is called the candlewick plant. In fact, the Romans used mullein stalks as candles and they called the plant Candelaria. And so mullein was also used for lamp wicks before cheap cotton was available. It's so soft, you can sleep on it. Um, that's some ethnobotanical uses for you. And it's said that the ashes from the mullein plant can be made into a soap, which will restore hair that has become gray to its original color. Now there's a component of herbalism I'd like to talk about called the doctrine of signatures and essentially this is a feature of a plant that represents a therapeutic function within the body and with mullein for example you know it has these soft hairs all over it and this represents the tiny cilia in our lungs, those tiny cilia hairs in our lungs. So really mullein, its doctrine of signatures, has this affinity for the respiratory system. Um, which I find absolutely amazing. I love the doctrine of signatures. The so mullein is both an anti-inflammatory and analgesic for pain and also has these antiseptic qualities to them to the leaves and the plant. Uh, the leaf and flowers have this cooling energy that acts both as a demucolant to break up mucus and as an astringent to really tonify tissue and in the lung, which makes it an ideal remedy for lung ailments uh, as it soothes and dries up this excess mucus. So the nature of mullein root, on the contrary, is really warming. Uh, its flavor is kind of mildly astringent and slightly bitter. It has this really earthy, robust, like chlorophylly taste. But mullein root uh, tea is just amazing. You know, and it comes down to it. It's really a valuable uh, bladder tonifying agent. You know, it does not irritate or overstimulate the bladder or kidney function. And so... Mullen root can be used as a long-term tonic 
for individuals with uh, urinary incontinence or recurring bladder infections uh, and even intestinal cystitis as well as things like benign prostatic uh, hypertrophy essentially which is a, a enlarged prostate mullen leaf can be wrapped around sprains and held in place with like a gauze to help align tissues uh, ligaments and tendons and this reduces swelling you know one can harvest the leaves and then wrap them in like a paper towel and put them in a ziploc bag and store them in the freezer and this way you'll always have access to a supply of mullen on hand you know Dioscorides the Greek physician uh, botanist and pharmacologist he recorded a number of uses for mullen which included things like constipation, convulsions, ruptures, um, old and stubborn coughs, toothaches, inflammation of the eyes, wounds, and even scorpion stings. You know, one of the considerations you want to have when using mullen is to filter it when you're making it as a tea, especially for the first time. You might want to use a coffee filter or a fine mesh strainer or something to strain it because they said that the fine hairs can irritate, irritate the mouth and throat. I don't strain my mullen because uh, I typically dry it out. You can use it raw and I just make it into a tea and you can use in tincture form. You don't need to worry about it but uh, some people it does irritate the throat and it's like a slight tingling nothing major there's no really contraindications from using mullen and it makes a great tea also you know they say that the fine cilia uh, i'm sorry the fine hairs i'm thinking the long cilia but um they used it for like a toilet paper and somewhere in England they, the, the women would brush it on their cheeks to create this pinkish uh, blush as like a makeup because it's said to cause contact dermatitis. For me, I've never had that issue and I don't know anyone who's really had contact dermatitis from encountering mullen. So I wouldn't worry about it too much and I focus more on its amazing medicinal qualities. Uh, with that said, I hope you found this useful. There are some species in Israel that do grow um, from Syria to Sinai. And I hope that you'll be able to interact with mullen on some level if you haven't already. And I hope you enjoy the other video. Please subscribe to Garden of Gardens on YouTube. Um, like my videos or comment here or in the group. I'd be happy to chat more with you. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention is that Mullen is also great for um, pregnancy incontinence, so leakage and things around pregnancy, except in the third trimester. That's more the issues there are more of the fetus um, pressure on the bladder, but it will come in useful to relieve some of that pressure. Also for childhood incontinence, so bedwetting. Um, mullen is very good for that, and I do have some Chinese traditional medicine. Um, tincture and tea recipes if you're interested just message me and I'll be happy to provide that so anyhow much love light peace and until next time I hope to see you again um, be well Aloha sustainable farmer Drew garden of gardens sacred herbs and botanicals I want to do a quick video before it gets dark out here I'm out here on the slopes of uh, Mauna Kea and Big Island um, as you may have heard, this is a very sacred place, uh, which is up this way. But I'm coming a little bit down, and I want to show you. See all these uh, semi uh, uh, grayish green plants over here. So I'm going to show you um, what they are. So you can see, I'm almost six feet, five ten, so pretty tall plant, at least five feet. So this is a second year mullen uh, for, bas for Vascum thaspis, which is in the uh, Scrofuriaceae family or Scrofuriaceae, depends who you're 
talking to. Um, one of the good things, oh, so this is a second year plant. So it has a, it's a biennial. And basically when it's in the first year, it looks like this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around so you can see it actually, and then um, talk about it. All right, so it does tend to get some browning. Um, you'll see a lot of them like this, and you'll see a lot of dead brown ones like that. Um, especially after the you know it's biennial cycle so this is the end of its first year coming in it's about to come into its second year and what happens is it shoots this um this stock up and basically um the interesting about it is that it's almost like candle like straight up and the the leaves at that point are no longer in a basal uh uh pattern they actually grow up on the stem so it's kind of interesting and then the flowers are up here and these flowers are actually useful um you can and, and so the flowers the leaves and the root are useful on mullen and um you can take these flowers you need a bunch of them and you make it a, an oil out of it and you combine that oil with garlic and you put that in your ear for ear infections and it works really well for um pain in the ear as well um and that's a common treatment for ear infections and pain and abscesses in the ear. Um, mullen flowers. Uh, the flowers and leaves are also edible in salads. You can eat them. And um, though they have this soft velvety appearance to them as well. You can probably see how soft that is. It's almost like lamb's, uh, lamb's uh, ear if you're familiar with that plant. The scientific name's eluding me right now. But anyway. Uh, this verbascum, verbascase, verbasca, verbascacum, there you go. Um, yeah, very soft. Uh, what attracts me to this plant uh, that I use it for primarily is the leaves, and I make a very strong tea, or just a tea, and you use these leaves and make a tea for um, any kind of congestion or, or respiratory issues because it works well in the lungs as an expectorant. Expectorants basically... Uh, go to the mucous membranes and and draw the mucus and phlegm out of the body so it's very um helpful and um when you have coughs and 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 you need to uh you want to get better what i like to do is mix it with uh, mullen sage and slippery elm and uh for sore throats as well um but primarily for uh respiratory uh issues such as you know cough and um any any other respiratory issues in addition the root um i haven't tried it but i've heard has been used for back pain i know uh jim McDon mcdonald uh talks about that um how he used the root with uh, black cohosh uh, and a little bit of arnica uh small doses uh and as well as by itself for um spinal injuries um, so basically what it does is that it lubricates the joints in, in the, in the, in the spine and, the the, 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 uh, connective tissue in the spine. Uh, so as you have like a slip disc or something and it really helps bring that back together. Um, so yeah, by the way, it's very cold out here and I, as you saw, I'm not prepared, but that's okay. I'm not that cold. I'm really interested in this mullein, uh, and you can see that the, the clouds are coming in, the night's dropping down, and the mullein's standing strong. It is considered an invasive species here in Hawaii. Um, just going to walk around so you can see how different they are. So this is out of its first year cycle, coming into its uh, second year cycle. This is its second year right here. Two beautiful mullins. Um, I did harvest a bunch. Uh, what I like to do... Is typically find ones like this and I, I pretty much harvest from here um, and use that other people harvest it differently uh, especially you know here it's okay to take primarily because it is an invasive species but I do like to leave it so that I can come back when I do come back and uh, harvest so yeah um, that's pretty much all I have about mullein um, Expectorant for the lungs, flowers for the ear, um, and root for back pain. And also, I've used it for skin issues, and it works quite well. Um, I make a tincture, but the best way to use mullein is by tea. 
Uh, also, it's a very um, sacred plant. I forgot to mention that. There's about 250 different species of mullen. And um, this one here in Hawaii, as well as all the others, are considered a very sacred plant um, because it is used as an herbal smoke. Um, and you can take the leaves and use it as like a smudge as well as um, you can smoke the leaves as well for the lung issues and um, what else? Yeah, it's like mullen and sage, you can smudge that. Um, you can mix mullen in with um, herbal smokes uh, for those of you trying to quit nicotine or just like enjoy herbal smokes or need to take an herbal smoke for various, you know, lung issues or other issues in the body. Uh, mullen is one that can help, uh, when combined with other herbs, really help get in there um, into the mucous membranes. Uh, but yes, as I said, this sacred plant, this elder here, uh, has taught me a lot actually. And I, I respect this plant a lot. And I hope that you do too and enjoy seeing all these beautiful mullins here on the slopes of Mauna Kea, one of the most sacred mountains in Hawaii. So, yeah. Anyway, I wanted to end it properly by saying thank you for watching. Please uh, uh, look, at, look at my other videos at Garden of Gardens YouTube. Uh, the websites are down right now. Uh, sorry about that. But um, if you're in Hawaii or visiting Hawaii, um, feel free to look up my uh, plant walks on Facebook. I got Garden to Gardens on there and Sacred Herbs and Botanicals. Uh, and you can catch uh, catch me on there and on Instagram, Resilient Farmer Drew. Uh, so I hope I, I can interact with some of you there. Feel free to ask me questions. And then if you know some plants in the tropics that you want to see, medicinal edible plants, just let me know. Or if you have questions about these in particular, uh, something I didn't address, I'll be happy to address it. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Um, if you have any respiratory issues, get you some mullen, and um, it's even great when you have coughs and you're sick or congested. Um, even with VOG here in Hawaii, for those of you who live here, uh, mullen will help by penetrating the mucous membranes of the lungs and, and really drawing that out. Uh, and when you combine it with other herbs, you can really make that a healing formula. Um, for the bog, which is, you know, for those of you not familiar, it's volcanic smog, basically. Uh, it's part of living in Hawaii. So, for me, mullen, I think, is a beautiful, sacred plant. It speaks to me, uh, and that's why I really wanted to come visit it, and I was able to do that. So, thank you for sharing this time with me, uh, for watching. Uh, much love, light, respect, and aloha. So, until next time.